Shalom, Salama, Shalom. All praises be to the Most High. Today we're going to talk about why it's not good for us to be sleeping. Matthew 26, 31, Then said Yahushua unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I have risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Yahushua said unto him, Verily, I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with you, yet will I not deny, deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. Then coming Yahushua with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saying unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh to his disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss in the same, the same as he. Hold him fast, for forthwith, and forthwith he came to Yahushua, and said, Hail, master, and kissed him. And Yahushua said unto him, Friend, wherefore thou art come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahushua and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahushua stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yahushua unto him, Put up again that sword into its place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legion angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. In the same hour, say you who should to the multitude, are you come out against me as a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. That all the disciples forsook him and fled, and they that had laid hold on him led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace, and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Yahushua to put him to death, but none were found. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and, and said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of Elohim and to build it up in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it with these witnesses against thee? But Yahushua held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living Elohim that thou tell us whether thou be the Yahushua Hamashiach the son of Elohim. Yahushua said unto him, Thou hast said. Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. 
Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, <laughs> saying, Prophesy unto us, Yahusha. Who is he that smote thee? Now Peter sat with the, without in the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou wast with Yahusha Galil. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow also was with Je Yahusha of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Yahusha, which he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept, wept bitterly. Second Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Yahusha Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Yahusha is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship, so that he, as Elohim, sitteth in the temple of Yahuwah, showing himself that he is Elohim. Remember ye not that, that when I was with you, I told you these things? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with power and signs and lying wonders and all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahuwah shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Remember when all this got started, oh, Azazel, decided that he was going to be as the most high and he deceived a third of the angels as it is written. Well, he is now at the end of his reign on earth um, is posing to be the most high again. And he's sitting in the temple of Elohim. And where is that? Could it be us, the temple of the most high? So religion has people thinking Things are going to be one way, but is it? You know, we're going to all be tested just like Peter was tested that that night. We're going to be tested. And that's what this is all about. Um, it's a trial of our faith it's to see who are we with, whose side are we really on? Are we um, those who just speak the words and, and are not it? Will they say we got to walk the talk? So, Paul has echoed Yahushua and he's saying, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of you who is so covered as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Which I have a little bit of a problem with that, that verse, verse eight, but that's another time. Luke 21 and 7. And they asked him saying, Master, but what shall be these things? And what sign shall be there when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Hamashiach, the Messiah, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear wars and commotions, be not terrified for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, 
being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea, which are the cities, okay, flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, which is overindulgence. Okay, and drunkenness and cares of this life, cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. There is no rapture. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. There is a video on this channel that talks about the rapture. There is a catching away, but it's not the time frame when religious, religion has taught people. Mark 13, tell us, when shall all these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Yahushua answered them began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Hamashiach, the Messiah, and shall deceive many. Oh my. And when you shall hear wars and rumors of wars, be you not troubled for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There should be earthquakes in diverse places. There should be famines and troubles. There are These are the beginning of sorrows. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which Yahuwah created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that Elohim hath shortened his days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. So he already has shortened the days. The days are already determined because of us, his elect. So the enemy is going to be going around doing what he's doing and thinking he's doing something. Whatever he's doing, he's still not in control. Yahuwah, just like he told um, the enemy when it came to Job, he said, you can do this, but don't you do this. Okay. The days have already been shortened. And if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Messiah, or lo, he is there, believe him not, for false messiahs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you therefore, for you know that when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, least cometh suddenly he finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Matthew 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold, that's for him. Okay, that love is gone for truth and righteousness and for the most high. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false anointed ones and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your master does come. But know this, 
that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master hath made ruler over his household to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, his master, when he cometh shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my master delay his coming and shall give his, begin to smite his fellow servants and eat and drink and be drunken. The master of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hmm. Whew. Will we be like Kepha, Peter? Yeah, we're all going to be tested. We're all going to be tested because that's what this is about. The enemy is accusing us before the father that we will deny him, that we will trust in men and in systems. We will not be able to stand and endure and, and side with, with Yahuwah. That's what he's saying. Probably the same lies that he told the third of the, the, the messengers when, when they all fell with him. So, but we're all going to be tried. Um, and yes, we could end up failing like Peter did. But Peter had time to redeem himself and to get back right. We won't have any time. Because when, when, we, when we are tried and we love this life more than we love Yahuwah and spend an eternity with him, um, we will not have time to get it right. There'll be no asking for forgiveness. Remember, we read in Matthew, he said, And he comes unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, it makes me wonder if Peter had prayed those three times when Yahushua came back and found him sleeping. Had he been, come back and found him praying, would he have been able to stand? For every time that he was praying, would have been able to stand for every time he was accused of being with Yahushua. Three times he was found sleeping. Three times he was given opportunity to... Um, Confess that he knew him. And remember what um, Yahushua said that if we're ashamed of him before men, he'll be ashamed of us before his father. But Peter had opportunity to get it right and went on to do great things for the for Yahushua. Matthew 24, 13. For there shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Luke 21, 22, for these shall be days of vengeance and all things which are written must be fulfilled for as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Mark 13, 19, and in those days shall be affliction. So we got great tribulation, days of vengeance and days of affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which you who were created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that Elohim has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Matthew 7. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I would liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, that it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto and doeth them not, I'm sorry. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Husha ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as having authority and not as the scribes. See, if we build, if we, if people build their if they build whatever they got on religion, and even some people, they'll hear something that's like, well, I don't know, but that's not me, or he knows my heart. That's sand. That's not rock, okay? That's sand. Though we know Yahushua told us, we have no idea what is coming, to what degree, when, or where. We do know some of the things that's coming because he's already told us. 
But, you know, when is coming, where we will be, who we'll be with, we don't know those intricate details. All we know is life is going to change. And after the initial shock, we have to be standing on the rock, doers of the word. We have to know him. Though Yahushua often told the disciples the event of his death, they were not prepared. He told them what would happen, and now he has told us. So we cannot afford to be sleeping. We cannot be sleeping. We've got to begin to pray. For it is when men sleep that the enemy plants seeds. Remember what was written in 1 Thessalonians 5, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Okay, Satan's day of vengeance. Remember one of the days um, in what was it? Um, Luke 21, Yahushua called the day of vengeance. Revelations 12, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, under and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with, ch with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of the heaven and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Yahuwah Elohim and to his throne. And the woman fled to the wilderness where she had a place prepared to Yahuwah, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's twelve hundred and sixty days, three and a half years. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Praise Yah. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Mashiach. For the accused of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. There you go right there. Love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, and she that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. That's that twelve hundred and sixty days, three and a half years, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. And swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth. He was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahuwah and have the testimony of Yahusha HaMashiach. Aha, uh -huh, that's the day of vengeance. That's why the tribulation is going to be taking place. These three and a half years of calamity will show us if our house is built upon Yahusha the rock or the sand of religion. Let us have ears to hear what Yahusha has told us. Before it comes. In Matthew 24, 25, he said, Behold, I have told you before. Matthew 13, 24, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed a good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears upon, among the wheats and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. That's why you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then Yahushua sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, he that sowed this good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy had sold them is the devil and the end of the world is the harvest and the reapers are the angels. 
As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. And this, this actually takes place in Revelations too. It sure does. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Did you hear that? He's gonna, they're gonna gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity. In his kingdom? What? Wheat and tear. There, they shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, remember in Thessalonians 5, it says, we don't be like them that sleep in the night. We're going to be sober. This could be a very scary time. <laughs> Knowing that there's going to be deception that is so strong. People only loving themselves, betraying others. Betrayal at his greatest scarcity of food, fleeing and hiding out, and all else that Yahushua has warned us in the three um, books that I told, read from Matthew and Mark and Luke. Yet there is consolation for us, the elect, pray we be in that number of the elect, that remnant. We will know his peace, his presence, his protection, his provision, and his promises. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Praise Yah. Josh 1. Imagine Yahushua was saying this to, to you, as he did to Joshua. It came to pass that Yahuwah spoke spoken to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with whatsoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt you have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for Yahuwah your Elohim is with you, where servant you goeth. Hmm. <sighs> Brethren, we must hear him every time he calls. His calls will be revelations of truth, instructions to stop certain things or not to go certain places, stay where you're at, you know, stop fellowshipping with certain ones, you know, don't do this, but do this, you know, change your ways. This is not truth. This is darkness coming to light. You know, it'll be like the calling of Al Alazar at the four days in the grave to come out. When he called him, he came. We got to remove the stones from our hearts like the stone was moved from the, the grave site. Remove the grave clothes of traditions. We have to respond even as Josiah did. Remember, Josiah is the one that was prophesied by the prophet who was deceived by the older prophet. Oh, that's in one of the other deception videos on this channel. So in 2 Chronicles 34, and when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of Yahuwah, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of Elohim given by Moses. And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law. Shaphan the scribe um told the king, saying, Hilakai, the priest hath given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes. O oh, inquire of Yahuwah for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found, for great is the wrath of Yahuwah that is poured out upon us, because of the fathers have not kept the word of Yahuwah to do after all that is written in this book. And Hilakai and they that the king had appointed went to hold of the prophetess. And she answered them, Thus said the um, Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, tell ye the man that sent you to me, thus saith Yahuwah, Elohim, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out unto this place and shall not be quenched. And as the king of Judah you who sent you to inquire Yahuwah, so shall you say unto him. 
Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel concerning the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before Yahuwah Elohim, when thou heardest these words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbled thyself before me, and didst rinse thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, said Yahuwah. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thy eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same so they brought the king word again. He was humble. He rent his clothes. He wanted to know truth. And he's going to die in peace. And he will not see that stuff. We have no frame of reference to prepare ourselves for what we will be experiencing. Yahushua told us to watch and pray so we can be somewhat prepared. Let's learn from Peter and not sleep when we should be praying. I must begin dying more in my flesh, just like everybody else. So just because I bring forth this message, I am not arrived. I must learn to deny my flesh. So my flesh will learn to be as willing as my spirit is. Because remember, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We got to train this flesh. Okay. Ending in Deuteronomy 4 and 4. But ye that cleave, that did cleave unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, are alive, every one of you this day. This is Mose. He spoke to the children of Israel when they're in the wilderness. Those that were cleaving to Yahuwah were alive. So in ending, I just want to say, Remember, we are blessed if we cleave to him, we revere him, and we must keep with his commandments. Be blessed. Know that we win. He will not forsake us nor leave us alone or without support. Shalom. Shalama. Remember, we win. And I'll put these um, scriptures in the description box. I love you and Yahuwah. We've got to, we've got to stand. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. Eternity is a long time to not be in, in the right place. So remember, we win when we keep the commandments in the Torah and love him with all our heart and soul and might and have no other gods before him. Keep his commandments. Shalom. We win. <laughs>